Hey everyone, welcome to the front row with Ed. If you've been to the channel before, you know I'm a physical therapist out of Integrated Physical Therapy in Bellingham, Washington. Like many other parents out there, I got roped at a very young age to start helping with my kids during basketball practice. And I love doing it, kept me connected with the kids. And one of the reasons why I love basketball is where else in one single game can you have all these emotions? We've got trust, respect, sportsmanship, defeat, victory, pain, jubilation, the list goes on. All this, you know, taking chances, all this happens in one single game. And when we're done, we all shake hands, we all walk off the court, no one dies, hopefully no one gets hurt. That being said, I'm always looking for ways to make myself a better coach and in turn, a better teacher to my players. I just read a great book. It's called Legacy by James Kerr. James Kerr spent six weeks with the world's most successful professional sporting team, the New Zealand All Blacks. What he wanted to find out was how they were so good year to year and how they maintained a level of excellence. It's a great book. If you have a chance to read it, make sure that you do, especially if you're a coach out there. But if you don't, I've read it. And I'm going to give you my top six principles that I've learned from that book. Every team must have a culture. For example, what does it mean to put on your school or your team jersey? Pillars to build your culture around include honesty, humility, integrity, and respect for the game and opponents. Adopt a slogan, something like no excuses, no exceptions, or champions go the extra mile. It's important that everyone on the team feels equal in their stature and responsibility. So captains can even sweep the floor, pick up after practice. Coaches can run lines. No player is more important than the team. Everyone gets treated equally. Nothing tears a team apart faster than when the star player gets out of running lines. The next principle is huge. True leaders create future leaders, not followers. Coaches and leaders must pass on their responsibility to the players. This means players need to be actively involved in practice planning, how they want to play the game, so they're invested in it. If they're not buying what you're selling, you will not have a successful season. This results in leaders on the court and on the field. Number four, make practices harder than the games. The biggest reason for that is players need to know how to handle their stress response. Most players will tell you, that when they're stressed, they forget the plays, they're not sure where to go, they're not sure what to do. Make the drills high pressure and intensity so players get used to playing with that level of intensity and they can safely make mistakes and learn strategies to deal with that. Number five, develop trust and build relationships within the team. A great way to do this is to serve the community or to serve others as a team. For example, putting on a camp for younger kids or going and volunteering at the food bank as a team or picking up litter or something besides your sport, but you're still coming together as a team and that's a unifying factor. Number six, set high expectations at the beginning of the season and then try to exceed them. Challenge each player to get better at at least three things as the season progresses. Give the players input as to areas in which they think they need to improve. And then give them time in each practice to work on that specific skill. This will make the entire team better. Well, there you go. I hope you learned something. I know I sure did when I read the book. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave it down below. Or you can always email me as well. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, you can do so now. Have a great season, coaches.